Hello and welcome back to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Now I'm aware there's already quite a bit of coverage and speculation with regards to what hardware or PC specs are required or going to be required for the upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well, the reality of the situation is that Microsoft have not yet released the details. But this video is not clickbait. And yes, of course, I'm going to be doing some speculation myself, but perhaps with some basis. And that is on the 24th of February, Phil Spencer, who runs Microsoft's Xbox division, announced a brand new gaming console coming up summer 2020. And that is the Xbox Series X. This new gaming console looks set to shake up the gaming console market in quite a big way as it features performance and grunt we haven't seen before and looks to be considerably ahead of Sony's upcoming PlayStation 5. Bill Spencer, in addition to announcing the launch of a new console, provided basic specifications. And so the question for PC enthusiasts is, can we draw any comparisons and get an idea of what GPU and CPU power we're going to need to run Microsoft Flight Simulator? Well, to kick off with, we're going to have a look at some extracts of the promotional video issued at the announcement of the Xbox Series X. But before we do so, let's have a quick recap, just for clarity, because the Xbox lineup can be fairly confusing. The current most up-to-date range is the Xbox One, and that comes as a Series S, and the top-line model currently is the Xbox One X. The Xbox Series X is something totally new, and thanks, that was a mouthful, Microsoft. Okay, so what does that all mean? Let's have a look at the specifications and let's get started. If you'd like to see more from SimHanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. With the new Xbox Series X likely to be in the market before the Microsoft Flight Simulator is available for purchase, it's interesting to see what its performance characteristics will be. But this is not a review of the Xbox. This is a review of the PC requirements. Nonetheless, it is interesting to note that it's going to have DirectX ray tracing built in. But our attention is regarding what sort of CPU does it have and graphics capability. Our attention is immediately drawn to the top item, 12 teraflops. A teraflop is a measurement of performance overall but specifically for a graphics card. It can't be taken as gospel, it's more a generalized or ballpark measure as CPU clock speeds, cores, threads etc all impact on the overall performance figure. But we can take a teraflop as a general guide to overall performance. A teraflop is a measurement of a computer calculation of 1 trillion floating point calculations Per second. 12 teraflops, so what? Let's try and put that into context. The Xbox One had 1.3, the Xbox One S 1.4, and the latest version Xbox One X 6, so it's twice as powerful as the current most powerful gaming console from Microsoft. In terms of PC graphics cards, the RX 5600 XT 
6 to 8 teraflops. The AMD RX 5700 XT, 8 to 10 teraflops. The RTX 2080 Super, 11.2, and the RTX 2080 Ti, 14.2 teraflops. So 12 teraflops, wow. So based on this information, how would we rate the current field of graphics cards? Well, I've divided them up into tiers. Tier 1 would be those graphics cards that are more than adequate. Tier 2, this will be the recommended. And Tier 3 will be the minimum specification for running Microsoft Flight Simulator. Remember, we're generalizing here. And assuming we want the graphics levels, as per the trailers that we've seen. Prices for the new Xbox are not available or known at this time, but one's assuming something between 699 and 799 making it the most expensive but also the most powerful gaming console on the market. The CPU chip is a Zen 2 from AMD. It's going to be a custom designed and built chip based on, I'm assuming, the 3000 series, a quad core with an extra four cores bolted on. In addition to its 7 nanometer architecture, it's going to feature, importantly, RDNA 2. For Intel CPU users, it's going to mean a mid to top end i5 or i7 or an i9. Until such time as more detail is known on the custom built Zen 2 chip, it's pretty difficult to draw direct comparisons like for like. It's been almost a time honored tradition that PC simmers have avoided consoles. One, because suitable software may not be available and secondly, because of the graphics fidelity and power. Well, with the Xbox Series X, that may be beginning to change. In a recent Steam survey, only 7% of PC users had an RTX 2080 Ti. Another important point, which I'm sure hasn't escaped you, is how are they going to pack this much power, 12 teraflops, into a gaming console and still keep the prices within reach? Who knows, if you're looking at a major PC upgrade in order to play Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, it might be cheaper to buy the console. If you'd like to see more from SimHanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. So we have the most powerful gaming console hitting the market, summer 2020. And what does this indicate for us PC simmers? Well, I think at best at the moment, it's indicative only. It's not time to panic, and it's certainly not time to pick your PC up and chuck it in the skip. We're going to have to wait for Microsoft to issue both minimum and recommended specifications for Microsoft Flight Simulator. One point I meant to mention earlier is that Microsoft have no plans for the Xbox Series X to launch with VR. In fact, there are no VR plans for that gaming console at this time which personally is a little bit disappointing. Another observation is the Xbox Series X is clearly a departure from the normal format that we've come to expect from game consoles. It's much, much larger, and in fact more closely resembles a PC Mini ATX board than a games console. I'd also like to mention that the views and opinions expressed in this video are my personal views and opinions, and by my own admission, I'm no hardware wizard, so take that as you will. I would appreciate getting your views and your comments if you can fill in the blanks on anything that I've missed, and I'm sure there's a fair amount that I have missed. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.